All right, we're going to continue uh, with the layers and motion tween that should have been created in the last tutorial on layers. Um, so just to recap real quick, we have uh, four different layers. We have a blue pentagon, a red triangle, a green square, and a black circle. And again, you can hide each layer individually to make each one disappear. And then, of course, uncheck that to make it reappear. Now, there is another button here that is lock layer. Uh, or the lock button that locks that layer from any editing you want to be careful I've seen some people that uh, accidentally click that and wonder why they can't do anything to that layer um, okay so now we're going to make some things move so I'm going to hide everything except for the blue pentagon um, oh by the way it is a, a good time to tell you that you can reorder these layers too any way you want um, you just click and drag up and down so Little, little technique for you there. So we'll start up with the black circle. Okay. Um, to make this move, let's say we want to make the black circle move from this spot on the screen or our stage, we call it, to this spot. Um, and by the way, speaking of stage, um, I can change the zoom factor. If I zoom in like that, well, I can't even see that circle um, right up. Oh, there it is. So I can zoom in for to see a lot of detail. I like to make this uh, set to fit in window so I can see the whole stage. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this black circle move from here to here. Now, let's talk frames. These are all individual frames. So in the, in the first video you saw um, with uh, the history of cell animation, um, th these are individual cells. So in, the nice part is instead of actually drawing uh, with a pen and paper or you know, pen and plastic like they used to in the old days, um, you're doing all this electronically. So you don't have to draw each individual symbol. We're going to make this move from here to here and make it look really smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to frame number 60. And if you're curious about how these numbers or what these numbers mean um, with the frames, those are individual frame numbers. And right down here, notice this number. It says 12 FPS, 12.0 FPS. That stands for frames per second. So. I'm going to go ahead and what that means is we have every 12 frames is translated into a second of real time. So if I have a t if I want a 2 second movement, of course I'll go to frame number 24 and it'll show you the frame number right there. So you see all the frame numbers up here. So I'm going to go up to frame number 60 and I'm going to hit the button F6 on my keyboard and what that does is inserts a keyframe. Uh, if you want to right click you can insert a keyframe that way. Uh, but I like to do it with keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so all along here if I if I use this little red button and I scrub back and forth you'll see that it doesn't uh, move anywhere. Okay, so I'm just clicking and holding down my mouse and moving it back and forth and it doesn't go anywhere. So I want it at frame 60 to be over here. So I'm just going to have it slide over to this side of the screen. Now, if I scrub back, you'll notice that it suddenly just jumps from frame 59 to frame 60. Well, I don't want it to just jump. I want it to have a smooth movement. Well, this is where it gets really fun. If I right click on my, my layer there, there's a create motion tween function. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you'll notice there's a line that appears a little arrow. And notice that this now jumped over there. Now, watch this. If I click and drag, it's called scrubbing back and forth, I get that nice smooth movement. Now, if I hit the enter button, the enter button will go in real time and you see how many seconds have elapsed here. So that's a nice slow movement. It takes uh, again 12 frames per second so we're looking at a f almost a five second um, uh, little animation here. Okay, so there's that. If I want my green square to appear, uh, we're going to go ahead and hide that. Now I notice my green square is no to, nowhere to be found here. And you're thinking, well, what's going on with it? Well, the reason you can't see it is because we're at frame 60. If I go back to frame number one, ah, there's my green square. So we're going to move that green square down to the opposite corner. So again, the procedure is click on the frame you want it to end at. I hit F6, so now I can see that. I'm going to click down here, click and drag it. So I want it there. I, again, if I did this, it would go ahead and just jump. I right-click, create motion tween, and now I have that motion. Okay, now, let's see what it looks like with both of them. I'm going to unhide both those layers, and I'm going to hit Enter, and you see I have simultaneous movement. 
pretty cool. I better go ahead and save my work here before my computer locks up. Control S is your keyboard shortcut as well. All right, so I'm going to hide these two layers so I don't clutter everything up. Again, I can't see my red triangle because it's only on frame one. I'm going to go ahead and hit F6. I'm going to move my triangle. We'll move it down to here. Make sure that you have that selected, by the way. If you have something else selected, it's not going to not gonna work right. So you've got to make sure you have the frame selected, um, basically your endpoint. So right now, that is where that's going to be at frame 60. So I right-click, create motion tween, and then it'll flash will fill in the blanks for me. Okay. And finally, my blue rectangle. I hit F6. And we'll make my blue rectangle go to the opposite corner. Right-click. Create motion tween and give it a little test drive, and there we go. Now, our final little test here, we're going to unclick all those. We're going to watch them all move simultaneously to different parts of the screen. Okay, so that is how you create layers, and now we've added motion tween to it.